You work hard for your money, but in reality, your money should be working hard for you. With that being said, this morning we're going to pick back up our financial series. Last month we talked about small business retirement plans. Today we're going to focus specifically on 401k plans. That is both for one-person businesses and companies as large as Fortune 500 companies. Roxanne, thank you so much for being back with me today. Thanks, Jenna. I'm really glad to be here. All right, Roxanne, mm -hmm. what is a 401k plan? Well, Jenna, it's really interesting about the history of 401k plans. Uh, in 1978, Congress passed the code, Section 401k of the Internal Revenue Code, and it wasn't until 1980 that a pension consultant named uh, Ted Benna looked at that provision and said, you know, I think that I could take this provision and be able to carve out a way for people to save in a very simple way for retirement. And that became the 401k plan. Uh, 401k plans became popular maybe in the mid-1980s. The first adopters were companies like Coca-Cola and the Gillette Corporation. And in the beginning, people didn't really understand them. Today, they've become extremely popular. Um, 95% of Fortune 500 companies have 401k plans today. I do hear about them a lot. That, yeah. That's definitely yeah. true. Yeah. Now, why would a company establish a 401k plan? Well, you know, Jenna, 401k plans really benefit employees. They give them a way to save through payroll deductions. For So someone can say, I want to save 3% of my pay or 5% of my pay. They don't really miss it because it's deducted from their paycheck. It automatically goes into the plan. So it's simple and it's easy. And that's what I hear from employees all the time. We love this plan because it is so easy for us to uh, utilize in savings for retirement. For an employer, it's beneficial in that, you know, employees who are looking for a new job oftentimes look at the benefits package. And if you're in a competitive situation, having a 401k plan is a benefit to the company for new hires. What would you say are some of the most important points of a 401k plan? Well, let's talk about how a 401k plan works, Jenna. Um, employees decide to defer a certain portion of their, of their compensation mm -hmm. and they get a tax deduction for that. It's, so it's pre-tax savings. And I'm going to give you an example. If someone's earning $50,000 a year, they decide to defer $3,000 a year, their 1099 at the end of the year is only going to show that their compensation was $47,000. Now, if that person's a single individual, and let's say they're in a 25% tax bracket, they'll save $750 in federal taxes by making that $3,000 contribution. Mm -hmm. So it's really beneficial for an employee to do that. They get the tax savings. And we've talked before in our programs about tax deferred growth the individual won't actually pay taxes on the money they contribute to the plan until they withdraw it in retirement. Mm -hmm. And um, there is an additional thing relative to 401k plans in that in 2006, um, employees could start deferring money on an after-tax basis. It's like a Roth IRA, which we had discussed in one of our previous programs. People can defer money and not get a tax deduction for it, but the money can grow again on a tax deferred basis. And ultimately when they take a qualified distribution in retirement, the money will come out tax free. So there's two ways to save in a 401k plan, mm -hmm. pre-tax, after tax, the mm -hmm. money compounds on a tax deferred basis. So it's a win-win kind of a plan. Is there anything else that our viewer needs to know this morning about 401ks? Well, there's a lot to know, mm -hmm. but um, very simply, usually the, the employee gets to make the investment elections. They get to decide, how do I want to invest this money? And traditionally, uh, plans will have a number of kinds of investment options. They'll have a secure option, like a money market account or a stable account. They'll have a bond fund, and they'll have various stock funds, both investing in the U.S. and internationally. So plans will have a variety of options and employees get to choose how they want to invest their money. Um, I would say the typical plan today has somewhere between 10 and 12 options. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple of plans up in Boston that have as many as 75 investment options. Well, now, now would you say that makes it difficult mm -hmm. for the average participant? Well, you know, it can if people aren't following you know the stock and the bond markets which is a question i always ask of people do you follow the stock and the bond markets um, 
companies will go ahead and typically they should be providing employee education through seminars. Um, they should be having, they can have one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions with people like myself, registered investment advisors, and there's even some really sophisticated online programs and questionnaires to help people ascertain how they should put together their investment mix. So there's lots of resources to help people. Are people able to change their investment options at any time, Roxanne? Well, you know, Jenna, they didn't used to be able to, and some plans don't allow for that, but the majority of plans do. So let's, you know, you've chosen your investment elections and you decide that you want to become a little more conservative or you want to become a little more aggressive. Most plans today allow a participant to view their account balance online on the computer. You know, you just log in on your iPad or on your computer and you see your account balance and you're able to make changes. You know, you can change your investment elections with your current money or with new contributions only and you may even be able to change the amount of money that you want to defer. Mm -hmm. You can say, I want to defer more, I want to defer less. Of course, that information has to be passed on to payroll, to the payroll department, so they make you know, the right changes as well. But the computer is really very helpful today. Can the employer contribute to the plan? Yes, yes. And the, the 401k plan is essentially what we call a defined contribution plan, and it has a profit sharing component. So the employer can make a matching or a profit sharing contribution or both. Uh, most, the majority of companies today offer a matching contribution and let me give you an example of what that's like. Mm -hmm. um, let's say you're working for a company and they say, we'll, if you participate in the plan, we'll match your contribution. So we'll give you 50 cents for every dollar that you put into the plan, say up to the first 6% that you contribute. Mm -hmm. Well, when you think about that, that's essentially a 3% raise. You know, there are companies that are more generous. I have a company up in Boston that matches dollar for dollar up to the first 8% that someone participates in the plan. So mm -hmm. there's really a huge incentive for employees to, you know, to add their own dollars. Occasionally, a company will also make a profit sharing contribution. Mm -hmm. So you get the match and then if they can afford to, they'll make an additional profit sharing contribution in years where the company's doing well. Are these contributions tax deductible, Roxanne? Well, as you know, the employee is making contributions either on, you know, without paying taxes, um, and the employer, when they make a contribution, it is tax deductible to them. So it, there's an incentive for them to um, make that contribution too. Okay, and the contribution limits in 2013? Well, 2013, the limits for an individual, max, the maximum limit is $17,500. If they're over age 50, that magic year, again, they can contribute up to $23,000. And the company itself could make a combination of a matching and a profit sharing contribution of an additional $28,000. So the maximum contribution for someone over age 50 is $51,000, which is a fairly significant amount of money to save for retirement. All right, um, before we go this morning, why don't you give us a recap of 401k plans mm -hmm. and you know what would be the greatest reason for a person to set up a 401k plan? Well, I think you know the reason why someone, a company should set up a plan is that they can attract employees or retain employees because they look at this very favorably. This is a great benefit. I want to participate in the plan. Uh, from an employee standpoint, payroll deduction is just the easiest way for them to be able to, to save. You know, if, if the money isn't in your checking account or in your wallet, you tend not to spend it. Mm -hmm. And because you're getting a tax deduction on the contributions, if you're doing pre-tax contributions uh, rather than the, than the Roth, um, you know, you're getting a benefit on your tax return as well. So it's really a win-win, which is why, you know, plans have become so popular. Great. Solo 401k plans. All right. Solo, oh. one, solo 401k plans too. I know you want to yeah. touch on that yeah. before we leave. Before we leave, I want to talk about solo 401k plans in that they've become somewhat popular in the last five years ago. So if you're not, you know, the Verizon Corporation with 250,000 employees, you're a small little company, maybe you're self-employed, you only have yourself or your spouse, they, there's now a provision where people can set up a solo 
or uh, in what we call an, an individual 401k plan. And so it's designed specifically for the owner of a company or their spouse or owners or spouses if there's more than one. And uh, they don't have to follow a lot of the rigorous rules that a traditional 401k plan would have to follow under what we call ERISA, which is the Employee Retirement Security Investment Act. Um, so it becomes a simple plan to, to establish. And for someone who's an entrepreneur and they're doing very well, they could put aside up to $51,000 in 2013 into this plan. Great. So it's very beneficial. So solo Great. 401k plans. We've got 401k plans that range from one person mm -hmm. to hundreds of thousands of people. Right, right. Definitely very. All mm -hmm. right, Roxanne, mm -hmm. if our viewers have any more questions mm -hmm. about 401k plans, they can contact you by just checking out the information that you see on the bottom of the screen. And next month, what will we be focusing on? Next month, we're going to talk about bonds and bond funds. As most people are aware, interest rates have been going up, mm -hmm. and interest rates going up has an impact on the value of a bond or a bond fund. And, you know, I think that's a great topic of discussion because a lot of folks don't really understand the relationship between rising interest rates and bond values. Great. So that's coming next. Great. Well, I look forward to it. Thank Thanks. you for being on this morning, Roxanne. Thanks, Jenna. Mm -hmm. Thanks for... Thanks for letting me be here. Of course. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in with me today. I hope that you have a great rest of your day, and you can join me right back here every morning, 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. If I